in today's class we are going to revise a lesson from blossoms and the name of the lesson is the wind cap so as you all know students the wind cap is a classic short story written by jane yolen it is about a boy named john who really desired to go to the sea and become a sailor in spite of his mother's lack of support his wish was granted by a fairy man who gave him a magic wind cap which could control winds this story is very exciting it depicts the life of john and the adventures that came along his way at the end of the story we see that john bought his own ship and about a hundred acres of land he became to be known as captain turtle and he could win both over sea and on land now we shall deal with the questions long answer type questions now students i am going to discuss the answers with you all but please read the chapter thoroughly and try to frame the answers using your own words so let's start question number 1 why did john's mother not let him go to the sea part b of the same question why did he go about his farm work with a heavy heart so the first part's answer can be written in this way that john's mother did not let him go to the sea because he was a farmer's son and according to her john knew the turn of the seasons and smell of the soil but he did not know the sea in the second part you can write as john's mother did not allow him to go to the sea so he went about his farm work with a heavy heart question number 2 what happened when john plucked the turtle from his head So the probable answer to this question is John plucked the turtle from his head and to his utter surprise he found that it had turned into a tiny green fairy man that stood upon his palm and bowed Question number 3 What did the fairy man give John in return part b of the same question what was the good and bad side of the cap so in this answer you can write the fairy man gave john a different kind of cap in return it was a cap full of wind in the second part you can write the good side of the cap was that john would neither lose the cap nor could anyone steal it from him question number 4 what could john do when he twisted the wind cap so the probable answer is when john twisted the cap he could summon the east wind and the west wind he could also turn it to call both the north as well as the south wind question number 5 what did the captain order his men to do part b of the same question what did he do in anger so the first part's answer can be written in this way that the captain ordered his men to bring john before him in the second part you can write in anger the captain grabbed john by the tail of his striped cap twisted him thrice and flung him out to the sea question number 6 why did the sailors 
try to rip off the cap from John's head. So in this answer you can write that when John turned in his bed, the wind cap on his head twisted round and about. It called up a squeal from the clear sky that hit the ship without a warning. The wind had been whirling about the boat, tearing the sails and snapping the spars. Seeing this, the sailors tried to rip off the cap from John's head. Question number 7. What did John begin to dream of again in the winter? Part B of the same question. What did he do? So in the first part's answer, you can write, Again in the winter, John began to dream of the sea. The second part's answer can be written in this way, that John went to the wardrobe, got out the fairy cap and stared at it for a long moment. Tucking it in his shirt, he ran out to the field and placed the wind cap under a stone where he knew the ferryman would find it. Short answer type questions. Question number one. What happened when John had been walking behind the plough one day? So in this answer you can write, One day John had been walking behind the plough when he ran over a tiny green turtle on a clod of dirt. He picked the turtle up and set it on his head where he knew it would be safe. Question number two. What did the ferryman tell John bowing before him? So in this answer you can write, The ferryman thanked John for his kindness. He wanted to know John's heart's desire as he would grant it to him for saving his life. Question number three. Why did John become popular with the sailors? So in this answer you can write, Since it was wind that sailors called for and John could supply wind, so he became popular with the sailors. Question number four. What happened when John went under the waves? So the probable answer to this question is, as John went under the waves, the cap came off his head. Soon the storm stopped and John swam ashore. Question number five. How did John divide his time between land and sea? So in this answer you can write that John spent half the year on a ship and half on the shore till at last he owned his own boat and a hundred acre of land. Now we have objective type questions. 1. Who wanted to be a sailor? 2. What could the ferryman read? 3. What did John request the captain to do? 4. What could John summon when he twisted the cap? 5. What happened in John's dream? 6. What did John do when he got to the land? 7. Where did John place the wind cap? And number 8. What did John come to be known as? So students, 
Please read the chapter carefully and then solve this activity on your own. Okay? Now we are going to revise a lesson from grammar and the name of the lesson is phrase and clause which you have already studied earlier. Phrase Such a group of words which makes sense but not complete sense is called phrase. So a group of words which has a meaning but does not have a complete sense is called phrase. We also know that a phrase has no subject and no predicate. Right? Points to remember. 1. A phrase is a group of words that stands as a single grammatical unit, typically as part of a clause or a sentence. So, we know this that a phrase is a group of words which stands as a single grammatical unit and it is a part of a clause or a sentence. Right? 2. A phrase expresses an idea. 3. A phrase does not contain a verb. So, phrases do not contain verb. 4. A phrase has no subject and predicate. 5. A phrase cannot convey a complete thought. So, phrases do not convey complete thought. They have a meaning but they cannot convey a complete thought. Right? And the last point is the words in a phrase are closely related to each other. So, please remember these points. Let's continue. Now we shall study examples of phrases. 1. Somebody knocked at my door. So in this sentence you can see that at my door is the phrase. It is a group of words which make sense but it does not give a complete thought. Also, it has no subject and no predicate. And there is no verb as well. Right? Sentence 2. The sun rises in the east. So, in the east is the phrase. 3. This necklace is made of gold. So, made of gold is the phrase. 4. I heard a sound all of a sudden. So, all of a sudden is the phrase. 5. I saw an elephant with a white skin. So, with a white skin is the phrase. Right? 6. This jar is made of plastic. So, made of plastic is the phrase. So, so, to sum up, group of words which make sense but not complete sense, that is, they do not convey a complete thought, is called a phrase. Also remember that there is no subject, no predicate and no verb in a phrase. Okay? Now we shall study the clause. Group of words which forms part of a sentence and contains a subject and a predicate is called a clause. So we can clearly understand after reading this 
that clause is a group of words which forms part of a sentence and it also contains a subject and a predicate. Second point, it consists of a subject and a predicate and a verb. So there should be these three things in a clause, right? Now there are two types of clauses, an independent clause and a dependent clause. Now what is an independent clause? One that can stand alone as a sentence is an independent clause. And a dependent clause is one that is usually a supporting part of a sentence. So a dependent clause has to depend on the other part of the sentence. Whereas an independent clause can stand alone. Okay. Let's look at the examples. One, she knows me well and she likes me. Sentence two, this is the boy who won the prize. So in the first sentence, we can see that each clause can stand alone. Right? Because they are independent clauses. So they can stand alone as a separate sentence. It does not depend on the other part of the sentence in order to make its meaning clear. So it is not dependent on the other part of the sentence. Therefore, it conveys an independent unit of thought. Such a clause is called the principal clause or the main clause. Right? Now in sentence 1, you can see that the clause, she likes me, is joined to the principal clause by the coordinating conjunction and. Right? So this is called the coordinate clause. Why? Because we have the coordinating conjunction AND. Right? Now in the second sentence part A that is this is the boy is wholly independent. Why? Because it does not depend on the other part of the sentence in order to make its meaning clear. So part A of the sentence conveys an independent unit of thought. On the other hand, part B cannot stand on its own. So it has to depend on part A to make its meaning clear. And such a clause is called a subordinate clause or dependent clause because it has to depend on the principal clause to make its meaning clear. I hope this part is entirely clear to you all. Let's continue. Now in exercise 1, the instruction is pick out the phrases in the following sentences. So before you solve this exercise, please go through all the rules of phrases. 1. Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world. 2. There is no book on the table. 3. She is lying on the beach. 4. He is a man of great wealth. 5. The old man lives in a house built of stone. 6. The plane crashed on the spot. In exercise 2, the instruction given is pick out the clause in each of the following 
sentences. So before solving this activity, please go through all the rules of clauses. Okay? 1. Take a lamp because the night is dark. 2. I expect that I shall get a scholarship. 3. Jack works hard so that he may succeed in the examination. 4. The bag which has a broken handle is mine. 5. She fears that she will fail. 6. Ronith makes friends wherever he goes. 7. When she entered the room, she saw her best friend. 8. The house that I live in belongs to my mother. 9. We ran so as to arrive in time. And 10. It is certain that he will come. So please do solve the exercises carefully. Thank you.